getting a bit of a lecture on the rules by Logic Rolls the Dice. Um, okay, you can set whatever rules that you like, but I would argue that I'm not subject to such rules, and you can only subject me to them against my consent. And uh, the T word, totalitarianism, or de torquemada, has sort of crept in here, or I've shoved it in, um, because that's what, in my opinion, inevitably happens. You sort of get somebody who pig-headedly refuses to accept reality for what it is, and you say, fine, I've had it with this guy. Time to take out the thumb screws. Uh, this happens in one form or another, even in more or less ivory towerish discussions. You just have to say, this man is an idiot, uh, and I'm just not going to deal with him anymore. Um, <clears throat> somebody that we're all familiar with does that on a regular basis. You just This person is just plain wrong, uh, therefore insults are now in order. <laughs> okay, well, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. I can't you know, stop anyone from doing it. But as Galileo said, and yet it moves. <laughs> you can force people into whatever rules you like, but that's all you've done is you've forced them into it. You haven't actually changed the underlying reality. Uh, and the underlying reality is there's just as much illogic in me and in you as there is re uh, logic, I guess. Uh, that's not going to change, or at least we have no evidence that that's going to change. Um, in addition to that, um, you don't really establish uh, a set of rules simply by forcing other people to accept them as axiomatic. Um, I seem to be having the law, quote-unquote, of non-contradiction shoved in <laughs> down my throat against my will. Okay, logic rolls the dice. You're going to tell me that two contradictory statements cannot be true. Now, I don't know, maybe you wouldn't put it that way, but I'm just trying to probe a bit and find out what you mean by non-contradiction or what you're trying to say, that I have to think inside of that box. Because <clears throat> when you say things like A equals A, even when you start, when you, even before you even finish that equation, A, e, before you get to equals, you have to assume that A Ness, again, got to watch the Freudians there, um, actually exists. You can't even have that equation without a prior assumption that a ness is a truth. Um, you have to start off with an a in order to compare it to itself. <laughs> so identity has to be assumed in order for logic to work in order to even say that non-contradiction is absolute. Because you have to establish something that can be contradicted before you can co contradict it. I'm saying you can't even do that. Or, maybe you can do that, but you can only do it provisionally. I'm not saying that A does not equal A. What I'm saying is, before you can even get to the equal sign in that equation, you've already made an assumption. And pointing a gun at somebody's head and saying, don't contradict that, doesn't make that assumption any more valid. So if you're going to say, maybe, or maybe I can agree with you provisionally that A has to equal A, provisionally, that's provided we accept the axiom that A, A's existence is establishable even before we start talking about the ingredients to that equation, A equals A, we have to have some sort of grasp that A is possible as a viable concept. <laughs> I'm sorry, but when you're talking about truly existential questions like this, and that's always hovering in the background in this discussion, how logic can turn against us, um, <clears throat> You're going to have to prove to me that A is phenomenally or realistically viable a concept before we can even start comparing it to itself. Um, the reason why I'm pushing things to this point, and I've frustrated a lot of people when I've done this, is I'm just going back to the old saw that atheists are familiar with. Extraordinary claims require 
extraordinary evidence. If you're going to use things like logic as an argument against me, against yourself, against humanity, against our existence, then I would say that's an extraordinary claim. And you're going to have to prove absolutely every last little ingredient along the way of any equation you ever come up with. Um, and you're going to have to prove that the axioms that you base that on are facts. And you're going to have to be prepared for me to go after every last assumption built into any of it. Any last assuming that built in any axiom. I'm not going to give you a solid place to stand. Why? Because you are making an extraordinary claim and you're going to have to um, provide extraordinary evidence for that claim. <laughs> Just so you know what you're dealing with.